main gear touchdown. Hurley now deploying the drag chute. Mission complete for the Space Shuttle Atlantis. The pre-dawn landing at the Kennedy Space Center marked the end of 30 years of shuttle flights for NASA. So it's a day of mixed emotions at the Kennedy Space Center. The end of the shuttle program means the end of thousands of jobs. 2,300 NASA workers will be laid off within days. Almost 6,000 more will lose their jobs in the coming months. Some shuttle employees have already moved on, while others face an uncertain future. The story now from CNN's John Zarella. Stephanie Estrada is lucky. She knows it. Every single step that I've taken, it was timely, and it was the right move, and it, for some reason, it's worked out. Stephanie is a lawyer. She wears suits. She wore them before, too, but those were called bunny suits, NASA speak for the garb you put on when working on spacecraft. Stephanie saw it coming. The shuttle program was ending. I was willing to do anything, whether it be technology-related or law-related or, you know, working at McDonald's. I, I didn't care. While still with NASA, she went to night school, got her law degree, and left the space agency before it left her. By the time the three shuttles are sent to museums, nearly 8,000 people will have lost their jobs. This was given to me as a, you know, just a reminder from everyone. They signed it. Bill Bender already lost his. He ran the department that tracks and photographs shuttles as they lift off and land. Bender thought he made a wise decision moving from shuttle to NASA's new Constellation program. It was going to be the future, taking humans to deep space. Instead, Constellation got deep sixed. Five months ago, Bill found himself without a job. And I still want to be part of it, but I'm beginning to come up to the point where maybe I need to let it go and, and look look at other things and look after myself. It's gotten to the point where Bill is giving thought to a job in Afghanistan, working on perimeter defense imagery. 30 minutes, get this thing hooked up, and the second it hits the ground, get this thing all plugged in and ready to go and flown free on, yeah. As soon as Atlantis lands, Ray Zink will lead a convoy of trucks to the runway to prepare the shuttle for its next move. Zink's job won't end until the vehicles leave for museums. After that, he plans to start up an organization that brings science and engineering to kids. We all have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge we'd love to pass on to another generation. So we figured, hey, let's get together, let's, let's find a place to do this, and let's you know, either go where the kids are or bring them to us. Zink has seen a lot of friends go. Within 24 hours of Atlantis' landing, he'll see more. 2,300 people will be leaving. The shuttle program is over. It's done. John Zarella, CNN, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The end of the shuttle program is not winning the support of many Americans. According to the latest CNN ORC poll, half of all Americans feel it is bad for the country. One third say no effect, and 16% believe the money can be used better elsewhere. I've just come from seeing the president and uh, over in his quarters, and he asked me to convey uh, his warm regards, and we are proud, not just of you all, but of all the people that are supporting your fantastic mission. That was then Vice President George H.W. Bush congratulating members of STS-1, NASA's first manned space shuttle mission. In 1981, Space Shuttle Columbia was NASA's first shuttle launch, giving birth to a program that has spanned over 30 years, five orbiters, and 513 million miles. Aside from carrying hundreds of astronauts into space, shuttle crews have fixed satellites, performed scientific studies, and ferried materials and people to the International Space Station. One of the shuttle's more notable missions happened in 1990 with the deployment of the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble changed the way scientists and students alike viewed space, providing deeper and clearer views of our own solar system in extremely remote galaxies. The shuttle program has not been without problems, of course. On Tuesday, January 28th, 1986 space shuttle challenger broke apart just over a minute into its flight leading the deaths of all seven crew members nasa blamed the explosion on an o-ring seal failure in one of the rocket boosters less than 10 years later in 2003 space shuttle columbia disintegrated upon re-entry into the earth's atmosphere killing all crew members on board in that instance a piece of foam broke off from the shuttle's external tank damaging columbia's heat protection system
In 2004, President George W. Bush announced a new plan to explore space and extend human presence across the solar system. With it, the announcement of the end of the space shuttle program in 2010, 30 years after it began. That brings us to today. The final shuttle, Atlantis, has returned home, ending a long run for American human spaceflight. In today's Big Eye, we'll look back at the program and also where it goes from here. Joining me now is former astronaut Leroy Chow. Uh, Leroy, great to have you on the show on this uh, very uh, historic day. Uh, you knew that you wanted to go to space as a little boy. I mean, how do you feel about seeing the end of this program? Well, it's very bittersweet. I mean, I, I dreamt about becoming an astronaut when I was an eight-year-old kid watching the Apollo uh, 11 moon landing. And then many years later, in 1990, I actually fulfilled that dream by being selected as an astronaut and then finally flying for the first time aboard Columbia in 94. Subsequently, I've had a chance to fly a total of four times in space, three times on space shuttles. And so I came in right as the shuttle was kind of hitting its stride in its operational phase and really was starting to get going. Uh, we were flying a lot of missions back then, about eight missions a year, and there was talk about going up to ten missions a year. Um, you know, and without the space shuttle, we couldn't have built the International Space Station. So it was really with, uh, you know, sadness that I watched Atlantis touch down uh, for the last time today, marking the end of the program. And I have to admit, uh, I got up early to watch it happen and, and shed a tear when, uh, when the wheels were stopped. Yeah, you and so many others. Uh, when President Bush announced a new direction uh, for the space program, what did you think? I mean, did you ever think it would really end? Well, in 2004, in fact, I was in the audience when uh, President Bush made that announcement, and it was an exciting time. He was announcing a new exploration program, but... Um uh, you know, but the, he also announced the end of the shuttle. And, and back then, in 2004, there was, you know, the thinking was, well, there's a lot that can happen between 2004 and 2010, and, and you know, who knows what's going to happen. And so I don't think people really, uh, really accepted it at first that it was going to end. But as we got closer to 2010, 2011, um, there were some proposals, some ideas on how to extend the shuttle. In fact, well, when I was serving on the Augustine Committee two years ago, the White House appointed committee to review NASA plans and suggest options for the future. Uh, we did lay out one option that allowed shuttle to continue flying till at least 2015. Uh, unfortunately, that was not chosen as part mm -hmm. of the new space policy that was rolled out last year. But, um, you know, we were concerned about this gap because now the United States no longer has the independent ability to send our astronauts to the space station. Uh, and we won't have that capability for probably, in my estimation, probably at least five years. Yeah. So, so what do we do in that case? I mean, from here on in, I mean, first of all, you know, I, I'm curious where manned space flight goes from here. But in that case, if we wanted to get there, we would need to hitch a ride with somebody else, wouldn't we? That's right. From now on uh, to uh, until the time we develop a commercial capability or until the new multi-purpose crew vehicle is flying, uh, the United States is going to be dependent on Russian assets to fly our astronauts to the space station. Now, on my last mission in 2004, it was in the wake of the Columbia accident, so I actually did train and fly on a Russian Soyuz flying as a co-pilot on uh, Soyuz TMA-5. So it is, it's, an, it's a reliable transportation system. I went to the station and back, but, um, you know, I hate to see us with just one source or one way, and I really hate to see us not having the United States, that is, not having our own way of getting our astronauts up there. Do you think this will deter future generations from getting involved with space flight? Well, I hope not. You know, the space program inspired me as a young person to really get excited about not just space, but about science, engineering, and, and life. You know, I think the one of the greatest or the greatest things that come out of a human spaceflight program, I mean, we can talk about the technical spin-offs, we can talk about being a technology driver and all that's true, but it's, it's really an issue of, of national prestige and inspiring the next generation. You know, I think it, it makes people feel good about their about the country and, and uh, the young people get excited and they get excited about their lives and what the possibilities are so um, I'm hoping that uh, you know this is temporary I'm hoping it's shorter rather than longer this gap and uh, you know I, I have confidence that we will continue to explore in space and uh, I'm hopeful that this is just a, a minor blip if you will well we certainly hope you're right uh, Leroy Chow great to have you on the show thank you so much my pleasure great to be with you